Good morning. I mean, I was awake. I was awakened this morning, probably about three thirty, four o'clock this morning. So some chirping going on, and I have a, uh, I have two, two in here that hatch. Now it's gonna be hard to see because the humidity. Let's see, maybe I can get some light shining in here for you guys. Let's see. Okay. See, there's one. And the other one is under here. Right there is the other one. There it is. So we got one. And we got one over here too. So that's the two Americanas. All right. So that's pretty good. And then uh, I went out this morning to check on the quail. And I have a total so far of 27 cook baby quail that hatched. All right, that's a good good thing too. I got somebody coming today to get 25. And then I got somebody else that wants five. So uh, I'm sure we'll have a few more hatch, you know. There we go in there. 27 little little quail running around. Now these things are about about a fourth of the size of a baby chicken. I couldn't fit 27 baby chicken in there. I mean they would be, really be cramped. Um, I really don't have a brooder for the chickens but I've been using the this down here as a brooder. This was a grow out pen for the quail. But I very rarely use that as a grow out pen because um, I usually sell the quail when they they just born like I'm gonna sell these today and last uh, month that same thing happened and uh, I need to start collecting some more eggs I guess I, I really didn't want to because we're going out of town for Father's Day and I didn't want to have to be, have babies here and be you know, worried about that. Now, right before, um, I might collect eggs like a week before, get all that in the incubators while we leave. And that'll be fine. But if I do it now, I'm gonna have some more hatching by the time we leave. I, I, I don't need to go through all that right now. I need, to, I need to have what I, take what I got now, which they're gonna be gone. The quail will be gone now. The chickens might not be, but uh, I gotta—I just gotta make a couple of calls because I do have a list of names of people that want hens, you know. So I'm able to tell. Excuse me. I'm able to to tell. Uh, I have some chicks that are uh, it's about six weeks now, and I could tell the male and the female so I need to get a good count and I need to call some of the people I got and tell them I have some hands yeah they all these are the ones here that are getting ready so the two on the door right there are two hens the two behind them are the are roosters and it's, I see another hen another one back there I think if I remember right, I had more hens and roosters in this batch, which was pretty good. Blue, you did it, buddy. Yeah, bud, you did it. Yes, you did, man. You got some babies inside, buddy. Hey, Blue. Thank you, man. Yeah, look at you. You're a proud new father, huh? <laughs> I'll come, I'll come back in a minute and feed them. Uh, I think I'm going to get in here today. Start working on uh, separating this and making one coop so I can hang there. They're feeding here and I ain't got to worry about coming here out here every morning and giving them food. I just got to come out and check everything instead of having to feed them every, every day. That would make it 
easier on me now. I know Eliana should be bummed because she likes she likes coming out here on Saturday mornings and feeding them. Now she's not here this Saturday. She slept at my other daughter's house. They had a slumber party. All the girls got together because that's all we have. I got seven granddaughters. Okay, so they all at my middle daughter's house. They all had a slumber party last night. And Eliana, she'll be here uh, later on this evening, and uh, she'll be she'll be shocked when she sees the uh, the baby chickens, because I told her it probably be Sunday, because I still got actually two more days before they sp start supposed to start hatching. So uh, I'm always off a couple of days with all of that. Um, it's probably because when I collect the eggs. Uh, the first couple of ones that I collect are probably a little older. I think I'm what I'm doing is uh, um, figuring it out from when I put them in the in the turner and uh, the first ones I collect are the ones that are hatching sooner. I believe that's what's going on because it happens every time to me. <laughs> starting to get some blueberries. It's starting to uh, ripen up. Um, a couple of things I really wanted to to do today, and I hope I could get to doing it. It's just been gets so hot after a while. I can only work in the morning. <laughs> I got some compost left. I was thinking about bringing it in here and filling this spot in back here, behind it, back there, because it's kind of low. And I know water probably sits there, so I could fill all that in. Then I could put me uh, some of the turmeric there, and I could probably put me some out here in the front, some turmeric, or turmeric, whatever. And um, my two coffee trees, I think I'm going to plant them in the inside of here. They'll kind of somewhat be shaded and need indirect sunlight. That will be perfect spot for them. I do have to trim back on that mulberry tree, though. But I could put the two coffee plants in here. Put me some turmeric or turmeric out there. And I was even thinking, I got some more squash plants. I could just plant them out here and just plant them. See what happens. If they grow, they grow. And we get some more squash. And thank God, we get more We get more squash. Can't never have too much. I just, I got some, I got some nice uh, squash plants in the, uh, in the greenhouse. And I'd like to go ahead and uh, get them. Get them in the ground instead of losing them. Somebody did email me today wanting to know if I still had some uh, vegetable plants. So they, so somebody might be coming by today to get some stuff. I'd probably wind up giving them more than anything because. I've been having them a while. Some of them look like maybe they might be root bound and not doing too good anymore.
uh, the other day, two days ago, I, uh, I, I recovered the seats. Make it come out nice. I added uh, the side view mirrors. Because that really now, that helps me backing out of this thing because I ain't got to turn around. And I added these little armrests here with these cup holders. Basically for Kara, she sits back here. And uh, so I got it. And, and I painted, uh, I put a coat of paint on all the metal, the metal frame. So uh, I got some cleaning up to do on all the plastics. You got some rust here because that, that used to, when you open it up, it would rest here. That is uh, metal and would have rust there. So I got, got the rust covered up with some paint. If we open that, that shouldn't do that anymore, but I need to clean that up. That'll clean up. That's all on plastic. And uh, clean all this up back here. Get it all, all the, that's all supposed to be black. I know it has a grayish look because it just needs to be cleaned really well. Same thing with all in here. And I'm thinking about purchasing a, a new top. You could get a top that extends out um, to get some shade back here. I don't want to get that for Kara. Um, they expensive though, man. You know, you, you're looking 600 bucks for a top, a plastic top. You know, um, I was trying to figure out some something else to do. Uh, I'm definitely trying to find it, just uh, a used one or something. Just haven't come across one yet. But um, so I want to do that. And plus, I, I need to put lights and a horn and turn the signals on it. I don't have no lights on it at all, and. Uh, for me to be driving it on the street, uh, it needs to be like that because they, they kind of, uh, in our little city here, pushing that as a, you know, as a, a code if you're going to drive a forklift on the street. I mean, not a forklift, a golf cart on the street. So, um, not on the highway, just in the neighborhoods on the street. So, that, that would give me, uh, I would put, you know, two, uh, head, two headlights. Uh, you know, a headlight uh, on the front here, or or I could get it where they cut it in, or they have uh, a little system you can hook underneath here. Um, but the other ones you cut into into the fiberglass. You cut into it and you uh, mount them in there. So you have two lights there, and uh, you actually they'll have a, a switch on the floor, on the floorboard down there that you hit with your foot that you turn them all on. And I would think, I'm, I'm not sure if you run something up here for the uh, the blinker. I don't really know how that how that's going to work yet. I don't know. And then you, I'll have the two lights in the back and you got to cut, cut out here and there. Now, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pay a guy across the street uh, works on them. I'm going to pay him to do it. Um, just because... Of uh, the bending over if, if, they, if, if I could pull this thing up like maybe in my trailer Maybe if I could pull it up in my trailer. I could work on it on the trailer That might be a, a way to go. I need it up higher. So I'm not working bending over uh, I can't bend over my knees are shot and um, it, it just would be real hard on me to to bend over that's why I can't even you know I paid somebody to do the brakes on my car on my van which wasn't a whole lot, but 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 I'm starting to have to pay people to do so. I'm I'm the kind of guy, you guys. I've never paid not one person in my whole life to do something for me. I've always done it, no matter what it was. If I'd never done it before, I would learn it, and I would do the same thing on a job. Because uh, I, I did construction, you guys. I always worked for myself. I did construction. And I would give estimates for all kind of stuff. Because when I first started out, I would I made flyers and I would go put flyers out. I'd go in neighborhoods and put flyers out. So you get calls for everything you can imagine under the sun can you give me an estimate for this for that video? and so there was a lot of things that I've never done before but uh, and, and look back then in the 70s 
early 80s uh, we didn't have YouTube to go or Google and go find out how to do it no you just had to figure it out you learn how to do it you just did it you used your brain something that people don't do too much today uh, they depend too much upon YouTube and Google when you got it you got a lot up here God gave you a mind and you could figure figure a lot of things out if you just click it on and use it I do that with my grandkids I, I, uh, I put the phones up and I, I give them math problems all the time they love it they hated it at first but they love it why they love it because they love using their brain that's their answer when I say why you like this because they like thinking about it they like trying to figure it out and I look my oldest one is uh, she's 12 and I'm not even talking about her. I'm talking about the younger ones that stay with us I got one the two that stay with us all the time on the weekends is she's five one's five and one's eight one's six and one's eight and I give them math problems not just the uh, regular you know one through twelve timetables I've taught them stuff about the tens using the zeros I've taught them things and so now I can give them big numbers and they figure it out now, sometimes it takes them a while and uh, sometimes when they home they'll call me and say hey Big C they call me Big C can you give us give us another math problem yeah so anyway because they love using their brain let me tell you using your brain stimulates your whole body and it brings a confidence to you brings a strength to you and um, because when you figure out some, when you don't know how to do something at first glance and you use your brain to figure it out that brings a major accomplishment in your life it brings a lot of confidence to you and uh, a lot of strength you become a stronger person more confident person in life uh, when so when something pops up and arises it doesn't knock you over you can you start using your brain to figure out what you have to do to overcome this or get through it or whatever whatever the, whatever the situation is so uh, yeah using your brain it's amazing that I'm talking about that on a homestead channel but hey use your brain uh, so you can figure out whatever you need to figure out if you haven't started growing a garden or raising any animals because you live in the city man, put your brain to work and figure it out that's what I did I live in the city I know all of y'all that that watch me all the time I know you're probably tired of me here and saying it but it's true man I live on an eighth of an acre and look at my backyard the whole thing is committed to growing food and raising small animals for food for consumption and so I'm raising uh, chickens and quail I got bass fish I'm raising over here and I'm fixing to do the meat chickens let me f give a little bit of food to the fish um, I'm trying to get my water clear down here Hello. you all hungry Time with, with everything in here. I got to get in here. I've been cleaning the filters every couple of hours, so it went all night. So I need to get in here and clean these filters out. Actually, it's a little bit lighter than it was yesterday, so cleaning the filters is, is working. And I added another pump in there to help filter it out. What happened was it's just um, this feeder trying to figure it out it started dumping too much food in there. And uh, so I have it unplugged at the moment while I'm trying to clear this and I'll feed them a little bit. But I got it, I got the quantity down now. I didn't at first. And then like I would leave it and I would want to come back and I forget about the time and I come back, man, and this the whole top is just like covered with food. I'm like, oh man. So after a couple of times that I was so much food, it actually started uh, caused the water to go dark and it caused my pumps to get the uh, filters to get full. So uh, I've been yesterday every two hours I was pulling them out and cleaning them so I'm gonna do that again today okay the fish are coming up to eat some of that 
Okay, they, they see it. They just didn't see it. The water's so dark. And they probably they could still be sleeping. I don't know. I usually come out a little later than this when I feed them. Uh, it's still kind of early. It's probably about 7 o'clock in the morning. I usually get out here about 8, 8.30 when I feed them because I do them last. I take care of everything else. Now, I'm going to clean these cages today. I got somebody who needs some, uh, some of this manure. I don't... I got so much with the chicken manure that I don't save the quail manure, okay? I, I just bag it up. And it, for, for, uh, for the last couple of years, I actually been throwing it away. But um, I, I got a couple of people that know about it and they want it. And I was just driving down the street on the golf course yesterday and talked to uh, somebody down the street and uh, he wants a bag of it. If, and I, I'll go drop it off to him uh, a little later today. I'm gonna get this click cleared out. Uh, hey, check this out. I want to show you on the ginger. I got some new shoots coming up. I got some new shoots coming up. Check this out. Like there, that's a new shoot. There's a new one right here. There's two small ones coming up there. Here's one here. And I gotta get in here. I'm gonna weed the rest of this out of here today. Eliana was gonna, uh, I was expecting her today because uh, I need to weed this. This is getting terrible. So I'm, I'm gonna get in here. I got to get started with all this. I was gonna have her helping me today, but uh, she's 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 off being a kid. She needs to have that too in her life. She just can't come here. Even though she don't do this every day with me, she just comes here. What am I seeing? What do I see? I see. Look at this. I see a green. I see a zucchini. All right, my first zucchini. I hope I got more zucchinis in here. Because I got the yellow squash, I know that. I was hoping I had some zucchini, but there's one there, thank God. Let me look around. Let me look around. But you know how this stuff is. Look, here's one over here. Here's one coming out right here. Okay, so these are on the end here of zucchini. So I probably could have some zucchini on this end. I'm not sure. I don't see any. Okay. I got some peppers right here. Some cayenne peppers. And I think I got some cayenne peppers in the uh, herb garden. So I, might, I might pull up cayenne peppers today. Let me go look. Let's go look. Yep, yep, I do. Look at this tall piece of grass. It's amazing how you come out here one day, you don't see anything like this, and then all of a sudden you come out here and there's a piece of grass a foot tall. So I pulled that off by accident, but that's okay. Let me pull all these off. Peppers here, nothing yet. I see little buds on it. Oh, it smells so good when I walk in here. Golly, I smell all these. I smell each one separately. That was so cool to see the squaw, the uh, zucchini. What have we got? Let's go. Let's get these peppers out of here. These, these trees are staying at least 
staying a little small because they're not getting a lot of sun because of the uh, squash, but that's okay. As long as they keep producing, we're all right. Because then once, once these are finished and we pull them out of here, the sun will be hitting this and I'm going to be planting even more, uh, more pepper plants. Banana trees, look at these. Uh, bananas are doing good. I need to go boost that ad. Sell those. Okay, so we got new things on the homestead. We got chickens being born, quail being born, some dark green zucchini growing, some cayenne peppers. Here's some of the uh, tomatoes, some yellow squash. Hey guys, now remember uh, we had the little chickens hats this morning, well we're going to put them in the brooder, but I got one that's trying to fly, watch, look at it, watch. <laughs> no. It's, all right, we're gonna we're gonna move the chickens. Yeah, you don't want to show how you how to fly. Okay, let's see. No. no? Okay. Uh, let me put this over this way. Why does it look like that? The beak it has black in it. I'm put it this way, so you can see us grabbing the babies. Okay, go ahead. ready? <laughs> Get them. Get both of them. Come on. <laughs> Now these are little. They're, they're these are little. Uh, these are little Americanas. Yeah, they. What's weird is like when we see a black chick. We used to the quail being dark colored, mm. and, and we just been having Buff Orpingtons for so long that we used to seeing little yellow, fluffy chickens. But these are black, and it's weird because we're so used to seeing the little bitty quail, and now we see these and they, three or four times the size of a quail. Hey, you want to show? Show them up close. Oh my God, they won't, they won't stop moving. Show them up close. There you are. Look how cute. That's they, Rue. Rue's the daddy. Oh my God, not not Rue, Blue. Blue. I mean Blue. Blue's the daddy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go put them in the brood. Let's go. God, they they, they wiggle worms. They won't stop moving. Now, now, now this is the tour. Well, over there's the corn, and and, and I know you want to go eat the corn. <laughs> You're out of my hand. Not yet. They're too little for corn, but we got to get. We got to. We got to get it. And that's gonna be all the neighbors. We got to get. We got to get some starter mix in there for them. So Go ahead. Put them in. Close it. Close it. Close it. Right, we got to get some food in there for them. And we got. I got. I put fresh water. Yep, 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 now look. Look, guys. Yep, 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 yep. You know, I've been raising quail for several years now. They're so hard. Look, look, look at that one's hair. And I've never look had. Look at its hair. And I've, never, I've hair. never had to, uh, it's hair you know, down. dip their beak into water for them to know there's water. And uh, the guy that I got the, uh, I got blue from, I asked him about that. I said, man, you do that? Because he had bunches of chickens. He's like, he goes, no. He's never done that. with a chicken, and he's been raising chickens for 20 something years. Uh, lots of chickens, he's got he's got a lot of chicken. And never, never ever had to take them and dip their beak in the water, huh? Uh huh. Never had to dip their beak in the water just for them to know there's water. So they're gonna know, they're gonna find the water. It's amazing that the size, take one out. I'm going to show you the, uh, the difference in size between the chicken. I have the chicken. And a quail. Let's see, where are we at? Can we see it? I can't see the screen. Can you? Look at, it, look at the difference in size. I mean, that, that's four times the size. 
Look that way. Hang on. I think it's blurry, is it? No, it's not. Okay, so can you see it as you're showing it? There it is. Oh, oh. You almost, look, almost got away. But see the difference in size? So when we see this, we're so used to seeing the dark little ones. When we started seeing that, it's funny looking to us because we're used to seeing the dark ones little like this. All right, guys, my camera went off, but uh, anyway, these little these little chickens are really they're not really black. They're like this smoky, charcoal black or real dark charcoal, uh, charcoal like a gray, but real dark. You can see kind of a grayish in the black, like a pretty color. I think they might look beautiful when they get get bigger. All right, guys, just wanted to show you that. That'll that'll end today's video. You guys be blessed. See you on the next video. And... To like, <laughs> subscribe, comment, and maybe share. Thank you. Alright, guys. Alright, y'all be blessed. Bye.